Hello everyone. Today let's take a look at how the meshes UV and triangle distribution work in visual effects. There are two examples in this sample level. One is similar to the absorption effect. We can see that the left one has some distortion and the right one is a normal absorption. They use the same mesh, but the UV is different. Then, there are two basic waves. You can see that the left one has a speed change process, which is more logical, while the right one just maintains a constant speed for diffusion. Their meshes and UVs are the same, but the triangle distribution is different. Here we have two materials, which are similar to some of the materials we made before, so let's take a quick look at them. For this absorption material, we use two noise textures. Set different UV tiling and different speeds. Finally, they are mixed to get the shape we need. Then there is the gradient of the text chord, just mask G. Okay, back to our main material. First, its opacity. We power the shape and mask we just created, and then add mask G to create a base color. Then we add a mask to the mixed shape to make it have a smooth transition effect at both ends. Here we use mask G as alpha and add a lerp 3. When alpha is 0 to 1, the output value is also 0 to 1, but if we set C to 0, the output value will become 0 to 1 to 0. So here we set A to 0 and C to 0 0.2. There is no need for two obvious gradients. This is a mask effect. Finally, multiply the output value by the alpha channel in particle color and add a depth fade, which is the opacity part. Then refraction part is also very simple. We add lerp to the mixed mask and set A to 1, which means no refraction. We use a dynamic material parameter to control the intensity of refraction. As for the emissive color, the RGB channel in the particle color is multiplied by hue shift, a color gradient, and the gradient color is controlled by mask G, then multiplied by the shape. That's emissive color. After looking at the material, Let's take a look at these two meshes, two hemispherical meshes. This one is a hemispherical mesh with basic UV, which is a very simple flattened UV. This one, we will see that its UV has an offset, so even if we set the texture to X or Y speed in the material, it will be affected by the UV and produce some distortion effects. This is also a way we often use to modify the UV of the mesh to achieve better performance. Okay, now let's create a Niagara for the absorption effect. Select the empty template. We need a mesh renderer. Select our mesh SM sphere and use the material we just created. Change life cycle to itself, infinity, loop duration, 5.5 seconds. Add a random color here, random channel, and the color is slightly weaker, 0.2 is fine. Then for the mesh, we need a different scale, change the x-axis to 5, and spawn burst. Now we can see, change the x-axis to 5, so it will look longer. If we keep it as default, it will be a semicircle shape. Then we add a scale color, where we use float to uniformly control RGB, the color of the three channels, and a curve from 0 to 1, that's it. Scale curve can be higher, set to 5. Alpha also needs a curve to control it. It needs to be set to 0 at the beginning and end, and then the middle part can be slightly modified. Add a key. Well, it should look good. Now, let's add scale mesh size and set it to 3 to make the mesh bigger. Then add a dynamic material parameter, because we use dynamic material parameters to control the refraction. 
We can see that the refraction is very strong, and it is obvious that we don't need it to be so strong, so we still use the curve to control it. Well, this should be fine. Add this effect in the level. Yes, that's it. We can change its facing mode to camera position, so that the effect will always face our camera. Okay, now let's copy this Niagara. This time we use Sphere Base. Look at the difference between them. It's very obvious to see it this way. The left one has obvious rotation. It looks better. Then let's take a look at the wave material, which is also very simple. A texture. Here is the U-tiling, and then the speed Y. We power this texture. Its exponential is controlled by time, and multiply 0.5 controls the speed of time. We frack time and make sure the output value is in a cycle from 0 to 1. Then we connect it to lerp and set the values of A and B to get the dynamic exponential. Now let's look at the mask part. It is still the output 0 to 1 cycle. Add constant bias scale to it. 0 to 1 subtract 0 0.5. So it is negative 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. And then multiply it by 2. The output value is negative 1 to 1. Add it to the text chord, mask G. Add 1 minus. Take the min value. Now we get the moving mask. Then we use power to control its edge intensity and multiply it by 5 to make the output value a little larger so that it will be more obvious. Okay, multiply it by the noise texture, which is the opacity part. For emissive color, we only add a simple blue. Then let's take a look at the meshes of these two discs. Cancel the material. The first is a basic disc, which is also a flat UV. As for the second one, its UV is actually the same. The difference between them is distribution of triangles. Let's first look at base T, a basic triangle distribution. Alt plus 2 wireframe mode. We can see that this is a uniform triangle distribution. Add vertices. Yes, its distribution is very uniform. Then let's take a look at the wireframe of a triangle distribution that we often use. We will find that the closer to the edge, the more concentrated its distribution will be. In this way, when the texture moves according to UV, since UV is normal, the texture moves in the same time on each triangle but the distribution of the triangles at the edge becomes concentrated, and it looks like the movement will become slow, which is more logical. Open the vertices and take a look. There is a clear difference. The average distribution of triangles will always move at a uniform speed, which is similar to the smoke effect we made before. We always hope that when it spreads to the edge, there will be a resistance effect to make it move slowly. Okay, let's put these two in the level and see the difference between them. We can see that this uneven distribution of triangles will spread faster at the beginning. When it reaches the edge, the speed will seem to be slower because the distribution of triangles becomes concentrated. And the speed of this averagely distributed triangle will always keep consistent. The operation of mesh triangles and UV is also a method we often use in making visual effects. Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you like it. Bye.